The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 8. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. The current world we live in is corrupted. It has been corrupted since the fall of man. And you can see the corruption all around you. This world is not a pleasant place. There is heartbreak all around this world. There is pain and suffering. There are wars and rumors of wars. There is sin and immorality. This world is truly a fallen world, full of suffering. But the Word of God reveals to us that there is a new world coming, a new world where there is no pain or suffering, no sorrow or heartbreak, no tears or turmoil, no pain or anguish, just joy everlasting. The idea of a new earth appeared in the books of Isaiah, 2 Peter, and Revelation to show the eternal place of redeemed humanity. Since the fall of man, God has promised to make a new heaven and a new earth. He will reset and recreate the heavens and the earth, such that sin, sinners, and the effects of sin will no longer be present. We should know that the Bible did not begin with the fall of man, but with the beauty of the earth, because the Bible records that all that God made was good. The notion of a new earth with a new atmosphere and sky is a familiar theme in the scriptures. Many of the prophets, both Old and New Testaments, spoke of this new heaven and new earth. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 12-13 through 13. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Psalm 102, verses 25 through 26. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. God's word is infallible. He will do whatever he says he will do. Although some think of the impossibility of a new heaven and earth, they have failed to consider that God made the current heavens and the earth out of nothing. The foundation of the earth and the framework of heaven were laid and designed by God, and only He has the capacity to change it. Prophet Isaiah also recorded the prophecy of the new heaven and the new earth in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. Thus, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. As a Christian, it's essential to view our lives with the perspective of eternity. Looking at the grand scheme of things, we realize that focusing on spiritual matters is crucial. Spiritual things are eternal, unlike the temporary concerns of this world. Prayer is a powerful example of a spiritual practice. When we pray, we connect with God, and our eyes shift away from the worries of this world. As we communicate with God, our focus turns toward the world and the things that await us in eternity. Another spiritual example that shifts our eyes from this world to eternity is reading and studying the Bible. The Word of God is an eternal source of wisdom and guidance. 
When we spend time in God's Word, we gain a deeper understanding of His plan and purpose for our lives. The teachings and promises found in the Bible remind us that this world is not our final destination. Instead, we have a heavenly home awaiting us where there will be no more pain, sorrow, or tears. Additionally, worshiping and praising God is another spiritual practice that shifts our focus to eternity. When we worship, we acknowledge God's greatness, His love, and His faithfulness. This acknowledgement helps us to recognize that our ultimate purpose is to glorify God and enjoy a lasting relationship with Him in eternity. With the view of eternity, the problems you are facing will not last forever. Having to pay this bill and having to pay that bill will not last forever. Dealing with stress and anxiety will not last forever. I remember as a young man driving to work and being stuck in traffic. I had to endure a two-hour commute in the morning to work and another two-hour commute in the evening back home. I thought there must be more to life than just waking up, going to sleep, going to work, and paying bills. And there is. True life is to know the Lord God Almighty. True life is to know the Lord Jesus Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is what life is truly about. There is a yearning within me and you, a yearning to know God, the Alpha and Omega, the one who created us. Unfortunately, in this corrupted world, some people attempt to fill this yearning through relationships with the opposite sex, but they still feel empty. Some try with illicit sex, but they still feel empty. Others try with money, but they still feel empty. Some have more money than they can count, yet they are still lonely, hopeless, and fear death. Death has troubled the hearts of men for centuries. The fear of death has stalked mankind. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not have to fear death. Knowing the Lord Jesus Christ brings a profound sense of peace and assurance. In the midst of life's challenges and uncertainties, having a personal relationship with Jesus allows us to anchor our faith in something unshakable. The fear of death loses its grip, for we trust in the promise of eternal life through Christ's sacrifice and resurrection. As we walk with the Lord, our perspectives on life transforms. We begin to understand that the trials we face, while temporary, can serve a greater purpose in shaping our character and drawing us closer to God. Instead of seeking fulfillment in fleeting pleasures or material possessions, we find contentment in the richness of God's love and grace. The emptiness we once felt is filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit, who guides and empowers us to live a life that honors God. Through the Holy Spirit's work in our hearts, we experience true joy, peace, and a deep sense of purpose. The yearning to know God is satisfied as we commune with Him in prayer and through studying His Word. Moreover, the fear of death is replaced with hope in the resurrection and the promise of eternal life in God's presence. This hope sustains us during life's darkest moments, giving us strength to endure and pressing us onward with confidence. The fear of any situation we face loses its hold as we trust in God's unfailing love and sovereignty over our lives. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Right now, Jesus is preparing a place for you, and that is the new heaven and new earth. You will spend eternity with God. He will wipe away your tears, whatever is making you cry secretly. Everyone has things that make them cry secretly. Whatever that thing is will be gone and gone forever. Now today and for the rest of your life, remember these words from Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Let them echo throughout your life. Let not your heart be troubled. Our current afflictions and reality will be remembered no more because of the overwhelming joy of the new heaven and earth. You see, all the predicaments we face here on earth are outcomes of a cursed earth and the manipulations of the devil as the god of this world. But in the new heaven and the new earth, all these things will not be experienced or remembered anymore. Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 8 provides a glimpse of the new heaven 
and new earth that God promises for his followers. The passage starts by describing the transformation from the current earth to the new one. The old order of things will pass away, and there will be no sea. The new heaven and earth represent a fresh start, free from the corruption and sin that plague the present world. The holy city, the new Jerusalem, is depicted as coming down from heaven, symbolizing God's dwelling place among his people. This signifies a close and intimate relationship between God and his children. In the new heaven and earth, God himself will be with them, wiping away every tear, and there will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain. The promise of an eternity spent in the presence of God brings hope and comfort to those who believe. God declares that he is making everything new, emphasizing the complete restoration and renewal that will take place in the new heaven and earth. He identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, affirming his sovereignty and authority over all things. To those who are thirsty for the water of life, he offers it freely, providing eternal sustenance and fulfillment. However, the passage also contains a warning to those who persist in unbelief and unrighteousness. The cowardly, unbelieving, vile, murderers, sexually immoral, practitioners of magic arts, idolaters and liars will face the consequences of the second death, being consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This emphasizes the importance of choosing righteousness and faith in God. For the new heaven and earth is a place of holiness and righteousness. The new heaven and new earth signify the fulfillment of God's promise to his people, a place where sin and suffering will be no more. This is a realm of eternal joy where God dwells with his children and all things are made new. This future hope serves as a reminder for believers to live with an eternal perspective, focusing on spiritual matters rather than temporary concerns of this world. In the new heaven and new earth, God's children will experience perfect peace, unending joy, and the everlasting presence of their Creator, marking the fulfillment of His divine plan for humanity. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.